Hello and welcome, dear viewer. As you probably don't know, I am a passionate hobby programmer. I plan on studying computer science in a couple of years. And as every programmer out there knows, we do game development sooner or later. It's just a fun thing to do and a great learning experience. I myself have been working on three major games, which were never finished, and a bunch of smaller games where some did get finished. Now, I had an idea for a new game, and following my decision of doing some stuff on YouTube, I will be documenting this game's development as the Indie Game Dev Season 1 series. Why Season 1, you ask? Because if I want to do another game devlog, I can call it Season 2 more easily. I will not be telling you what this game is about. You can or cannot figure that out yourself as we go along. While I was speaking, you saw the first hour of the programming fly by, and in the beginning, I was really just doing things that I call the backend, mathematical functionality, just as RNG, essential classes, and other stuff to prepare the class hierarchy. This is very boring for non programmers, for anyone that's interested. You can see that I'm using Unity for this project and programming C sharp for that reason. I'm glad that they chose this language, by the way, and TypeScript was really horrible and nobody used it, so it's good that it's removed. And I think I'm seriously outraging the entire TypeScript community, but this is only about the use of TypeScript in Unity scripting, okay? So while the rest of the time lapse is humming along, I can ramble about some computer science -y stuff. For anyone that's interested, I'm actually using an interface here for all the objects that will later be in the game, and they have all their custom positions, and small common interface but enough of that interfacey stuff let's get to the real graphical interfaces which I spent the next couple of hours creating as you will be seeing on the screen right now now unfortunately remember that interface that I just talked about like three seconds ago that's not possible in unity you can't create custom editors for such things so <laughs> <laughs> I was very surprised to find that out. I thank C Sharp and Unity for their great support of intricate features of the C Sharp language. And after all, this was the most frustrating day of development so far. And you will see me test out some more stuff right here. And But that's not a problem. After all, I managed to implement a custom editor for some things. And I managed to learn quite a bit on the way. Now, right now, you will be seeing me doing the first graphical tests of those objects I just talked about, which I thought was the most easiest way to test all the programs. And right now, I'm actually writing the intersection code, which implement, which included some dynamic dispatch and some line intersection as well as circle line intersection stuff. Right now you're seeing the first real test of this. All the objects that are lighting up red have an intersection right now. And I know it's a bit lagging, but that's not a problem. You can see that it's working very greatly whenever this moving rectangle intersects either this collection of points or the other rectangle. We are seeing that it's perfectly lighting up red. Now the circles might look a bit off, but that's simply because um, the circles do not represent the actual intersection that is checked. The intersection that is checked is a bit larger than these circles, and this was actually a bug, and I fixed it later to match everything. Now I am actually fixing the orientation code. If you have observed in the circles previously, there were these blue lines. And the blue lines were indicating where the orientation is pointing. And this will be important later for graphics and some other game logic stuff. And those were actually not pointing in the correct direction. So you see me testing a couple of different orientations with these points. And I had to go through. And the most important problem that I encountered was actually radians and degrees mixing up where I used the sine function of radians. Uh, and I put in degrees. So anyways, this is the final um, game code clip that you will see, which is me testing all the intersections again, as well as some rotating orientation code. And you can see that all the intersections work perfectly fine. And I put in some more intersection code here because I forgot that if the circles are inside the rectangle, they also intersect the rectangle, not only outside.
Anyways, <laughs> let's continue on with something else. I was pretty tired of game development, so I started with the graphics. Now, as you might guess from these images, I am doing a pixel art style for this game. And this, of course, has a reason. The reason being, I'm very terrible at doing any sort of artwork. I'm extremely terrible at doing any sort of artwork, so the best artwork I can do is actually working with pixel art. So this should be a house that will later be one of the items that you will see the most in the game. As I later found out, its scale was completely off, so I had to do work on the characters first. This is sort of the prototype for the character, what you're seeing right now. And in just a second I will start work on the real characters. Now I will say immediately that I was extremely inspired um, in my character design by the final first two Final Fantasy games. This may be visible in just a minute. I will also be later be looking at Final Fantasy images all the time, uh, off screen of course, but I will be looking at Final Fantasy character images to figure out the style that I'm going for and one area that I looked at is especially well is this area which I'm doing right now on the trousers where one trousers above the other and so I'm trying to figure out how to put that into a two-dimensional image and I think right now yes right now I'm doing this outline thingy for <laughs> just a second you saw it fly by and this was actually to test the Final Fantasy style itself which actually has this black outline around the whole character but they actually use slightly more pixels for character where this sort of style looks better and didn't work for me. Anyways, all the rest of the sprite sheet that I'm creating right now is the backside and th sort of the animated um, character and now I'm working on the side character but I won't be able to finish that in today's episode. So that's the first week of game development essentially. I want to thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.